Hello everyone and welcome back to day 30 of our 30 day biology study challenge. If you've stuck with us for the entire time, congratulations, we're on our final day. And if you're just jumping in for this video or a few here and there, that is wonderful. I'm so glad you're here and I hope these resources will be helpful to you. Before we begin, be sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my other useful study resources. I post videos about life science and life lessons here on this channel. Today we're going to be talking about human impact on the environment and after a content review, we're going to have some practice questions to really lock that knowledge into your brain. So be sure you stay tuned until the very end. Let's get started. So we know that Earth's organisms share limited resources. We rely on processes like the water cycle, the nitrogen cycle, the carbon cycle to cycle out essential nutrients and molecules in and around the Earth that are essential to survival. And of course, the Earth changes over time, but humans are a huge source of environmental change. And if we look at this graph here on screen, I'll blow it up for you so it's a little bit bigger. This is the world population growth in billions. It's a little outdated because we know now that the world's population is estimated to be above 8 billion, but the depletion of Earth's resources and different impacts from humans and their behavior is often a direct result of human population growth. And often humans are the cause of major disruptions to different natural ecosystems. And because we rely on the natural world and organisms and things found in nature for products and for medicine and for our own survival, making sure that we protect Earth's resources and its organisms is important to our own survival. Now let's talk about these resources that are found on Earth. So renewable resources are any natural resource that can be replaced by natural processes relatively quickly. When I say relatively, generally that means within a human lifespan or at a rate faster than the rate that they are used. Non-renewable, on the other hand, cannot be replaced within human lifetime. Now, non-renewable resources come from natural processes like fossil fuels, for example, but it takes millions and millions of years for these resources to form. So when we're speaking in realistic terms of humans and what we have access to, once non-renewable resources are used up, they are gone. There's not going to be any more for a long, 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 long time, and they may not even replenish. They are a limited resource and they may be used up by humans. So examples of these are coal, oil, natural gas. Renewable, on the other hand, we could talk about things like wood, organisms that we use as resources like fish. But it's important to note that renewable resources can become non-renewable if humans use them up too quickly. Now, when I talk a little bit about the ozone layer, now this is an interesting case of human impact. And the hole in the ozone layer we know is primarily caused by CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons, which are chemicals that come from things like old aerosol sprays. And these have actually made an increasing hole in the ozone layer. Now, the good news is that after mitigation, after some laws that went effect banning CFCs and certain products, we have started to see a decrease in the hole in the ozone layer, uh, which is really good. But this is the progression of the hole from 1979 to 2008. So you can see in these images, they're getting bigger. But in the recent years, we have seen data to show that this hole is shrinking. So that's some good news. But the ozone layer protects Earth from harmful radiation, UV radiation, and we know that compounds in certain products have damaged this ozone layer. One thing students often confuse is that the hole in the ozone layer is a major contributor to global warming. And those are actually two separate issues, so let's talk about both of them. Global warming is an increase in the average temperature of the biosphere on Earth. It's mainly a result of burning fossil fuels and introducing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, which trap heat at a higher rate than normal. And alongside global warming, we see other issues like rising sea levels, coastal flooding, melting of polar ice caps, melting of glaciers, all of which can have devastating effects on the environments and the people who live in those areas. Now, there are other activities that humans can do that cause disruptions, not on such a massive global scale, but on a scale that can be a huge problem for local ecosystems. So for an example, humans often have either intentionally for a good purpose or unintentionally introduced an invasive species to an area that does harm to the native species in an environment. Now, an invasive spe species is a non-native species, so something that wasn't originally from that place, that comes and does harm to the local ecosystem. A really common example of this is kudzu in the southeast. It was introduced as a decorative vine, something used in erosion control, and it has completely overtaken local ecosystems, totally covering native plants, blocking out the sunlight, out competing native species and reproducing at a faster rate 
which then decreases the overall biodiversity of the ecosystem, which we talked about in yesterday's video. Human activities can also introduce new diseases to an area. Elm disease was a tree disease that was introduced, totally devastating. And often we see more of this with the increased movement of humans and human activity on the planet. And of course, habitat change is a huge driver of species either becoming threatened. And habitat change, of course, is a huge threat to different species. Actually, habitat loss is the number one reason species are at risk of becoming extinct. Habitat loss can occur for a number of different reasons from human activity. So pollution, pollution in an area could destroy habitat. For example, certain chemicals or gases could kill off native species that different organisms rely on to survive. This can obviously come from the burning of fossil fuels, but also chemicals, runoff. Uh, even certain fertilizers could end up be damaging to different species in an area if they're carried off into local water supplies. Deforestation, just removing a large amount of trees for a certain area, either for the use in lumber or for building roads or other things. And again, related to that is logging, monocropping. So when you're planting only one specific species in an area. Uh, and industrialization is in just any area is a good example of this, but as more nations become industrialized, we see more and more of this habitat change in local ecosystems. So a lot of this sounds like bad news, and when a lot of students hear all of these things that humans do that can disrupt local ecosystems, a lot of times they think, okay, well, I can't do anything about that, or, well, just humans are all bad and everything we do is going to harm the environment. But that's not true. There are other ways, or plenty of ways, where humans can have a positive impact on the environment. So the classic word reduce, reuse, so if we reduce our consumption of certain resources, or we recycle and compost our resources. So instead of generating more waste, which causes more problems in environments, if we're composting, we're reducing the buildup of things like methane gas and landfills, and it's going back into the ground where decomposers can do their work and return those molecules into biogeochemical cycles that are healthy for environments. Uh, planting native species is another way that's hugely beneficial for the biodiversity of an area. Instead of planting non-native or invasive species, which could end up causing harm to a local ecosystem. Of course, supporting sustainable practices. A lot of this is out of our hands as individuals, but we can support companies that have sustainable practices or vote for legislation that we know will support the environment. And of course, advocating for environmental policies. Like I said before, when we banned the use of CFCs in certain products, that actually did have an effect. We stopped increasing the hole in the ozone layer and it is ending up starting to heal. If you're interested in these topics, I would recommend looking into an environmental science like AP environmental science course, or if your college or university has as topics on this. Environmental studies are a really fascinating and important key area of science that will affect our lives and the lives of those in the future. All right, so let's do some practice problems before we end today. As we go through these, feel free to pause me, mute me, or go at your own pace through these questions. Remember, make sure to use these in the way that best serves you and your learning. Let's get started. Fertilizers may negatively impact a local ecosystem because they can A, be absorbed by plant roots, B, cause mutations in all insects, C, be carried into local water supplies, or D, cause atmospheric pollution. Think about it. The correct answer is C. A lot of times fertilizers have a risk of being washed into local water supplies, which could cause harmful effects on species that live in local water systems or to the organisms and people who drink that water. Which factor is a major contributor to global warming? A, decreased water availability, B, increased burning of fossil fuels, C, increased number of trees, or D, increased sizes of ozone holes? Think about it. Correct answer is B, increased burning of fossil fuels. Now we talked about how the hole in the ozone is gonna let in more UV radiation, but a major contributor to global warming is actually the increased burning of fossil fuels, releasing greenhouse gases, trapping extra heat in the atmosphere. Which activity would most likely have a positive effect on a local ecosystem? A, introducing an invasive species to the area. B, clearing land to create more roads in an area. C, using heavy pesticides to eliminate insects from an area, or D, planting native grasses and tree species. Think about it. Correct answer is D, planting native grasses and tree species. All right, what is the primary cause of endangered species going extinct? A, pollution, B, overfishing or overhunting, C, habitat loss, or D, pesticide use. Think about it. Correct answer is C, habitat loss. Now, all of these could contribute to a species going extinct. However, habitat loss is the number one reason species are at risk of becoming extinct on planet Earth. 
All right, congratulations. You have made it all the way through our 30 day biology challenge. Thanks so much for sticking with us this entire time. Or if you've just jumped in for this video, I'm so glad you're here. Be sure you subscribe again so you don't miss out on any of the resources that are on this channel. You'll find some useful study tips as long as lots of life science content that hopefully help you out, whether you're studying biology in high school, college, or just for your own interest. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.